everybody, I'm Meso, and welcome to another opinion piece. I'm gonna try to keep this sub 10 minutes, but it's still pretty long, which is why this is an opinion piece and not a news video. So let's talk about this. Uh, today this is gonna be about Lego Ninjago and the future of the TV show, as well as a recent press release that was sent out to the Lego Ambassador Network about the future of the theme, which I am going to read to you right now. Ninjago March of the Oni marks the conclusion to an epic storyline which started in 2018. After a little vacation time, it's time for the ninja to get ready for a brand new adventure. The upcoming TV season will have 30 episodes of 11 minutes each, making it the ninja's biggest adventure yet. The season picks up shortly after March of the Oni and remains true to the story canon and characters. This is not a reboot, nor a spin-off, but merely a brand new adventure. A fresh beginning helps new viewers to watch and discover the magic of Ninjago without knowing much about the 100 episodes prior. But if you do know your Ninjago canon, it will be a fun and fast refresher course as we get everyone back up to speed. We want to make sure Ninjago is a welcoming experience. The new season marks the beginning of a new chapter in the world of Ninjago. Whereas the first chapter was heavily tied to a 22-minute serialized TV format, this next chapter will not be confined to a specific format. The 11-minute episodes allow for new and creative possibilities for the storytelling. Also, with the growth of is it, yeah, with the growth of exciting story formats like comics, in-world books, etc., that are extending the Ninjago universe, this new chapter will be more exploratory and creative. Our ambition to always keeping Ninjago compelling and interesting is core to the continued popularity of Ninjago. For longtime fans, this new season will feel both new and familiar. There will be many deep cuts, recurring characters, references to past events, and reveals of previously undiscovered lore from ancient Ninjago history. All those components are core to Ninjago, and after all, the new episodes are being produced by some of the biggest fans of the franchise. Ninjago has become a world of its own, and we have been blessed with the opportunity to tell action-packed, engaging, and emotional stories to a constant stream of newcomers and longtime followers of the show. We hope you're ready to join us and the ninja as they embark on their next great adventure. Stay tuned for the official Ninjago Secrets of the Forbidden Spinjitsu season teaser, which will be released on May 26th. Ninjago! Sincerely, the Ninjago team. So let's cut to the chase. There's a few big things here. First and foremost, Ninjago is being soft rebooted. So, you know, you may say, so they said it's not a reboot. What do you mean? Well... You know, TV Tropes puts it best about what a soft reboot is. They, I'm going to link the page in the description. They essentially say, you know, resetting the thing to bring in new fans sounds like a good idea, but maybe the core story is still interesting if you can get rid of the bad superficial elements that accumulated around it over the years or peel back the exaggeration of its problems over time. Maybe you're about to release it into a wider market where they never got the previous entry while trying to please existing fans etc etc what to do well instead of starting over dip into the troper well and pull out of a way of explaining you're not really tossing away the classic stories the fans loved in essence this will be a continuation of the ninjago story but for all intents and purposes it will be a pseudo reboot in the sense that the past 10 seasons are not mandatory viewing to understand the plot this is not a bad thing, by the way. This is perfectly serviceable. Franchises do it all the time. But it is a tightrope to walk, quality-wise, because I have some concerns about how this could be handled. And we're going to be talking about all that on Ninjago Cast, the next episode. But for the moment, I remain cautiously optimistic, because, you know, like I was trying to prevent the Bionicle problem, where Bionicle went on for 10 years, and the lore was built up to such a point to where every year built on the last, which was cool for fans, but it made getting into the new theme a daunting task for people, having to do so much catch-up work on old material. You know, giving the theme kind of a fresh start, a new launching off point, and potentially changing its method of distribution. I see a lot of people speculating that line about, you know, new exploratory formats, 11-minute episodes, like this could be released online. I see a lot of people assuming it'll be released on YouTube or the Ninjago website versus Cartoon Network, and that makes total sense to me. People always hated how Cartoon Network scheduled the episodes so poorly. Um, doing this with a soft reboot kind of a style will allow it to reach new audiences that it would simply not be possible to reach otherwise. Now, you can go too far with this, um, 
before I talk about my concerns, let's just illustrate how they got to this point. They've been building towards this for years without any of us really noticing, ever since they brought Garmadon back in Sons of Garmadon, which I assumed was just a Ninjago movie kind of a thing, to where Garmadon is the villain in the movie, ergo he should be the villain in the show, to kind of cross-advertise between the two. And I think that's totally what they did, but over the course of the season since then, they've effectively repositioned the show back to how it began. You know, the ninja are at the monastery. They just defeated their greatest threat so far. You know, Garmadon's out there in the wild, he's living his life, but nobody knows where he is. He's not a concern at the moment. The ninja are getting lazy. You know, they're wasting their true potential. You know, the, the leaked Teletoon teaser showed the ninja, like, hopping in the hot tub and playing games and not taking things seriously. And Wu has to teach them to get their act together. You know, there's, there's Spinjitsu secrets. They're fighting Serpentine. This is literally season one. This is like Rise of the Snakes. They're doing it again. It's the exact same premise. And that's not a bad thing, by the way, to me. I personally find it genius how they've subtly repositioned the show back to how it began. The golden weapons are even back. Everything we thought prior was just like nostalgic callbacks or a celebration of the 10 seasons or 100 episodes or blah 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 That was all true, but it was also their way of kind of maneuvering the theme back in a complete circle. And I personally find it genius how they, how they pulled that off. Whether the writing is good from this point on is my main concern, because it's cool up till now. I have no issues with what they're doing, no issues with the goal of a soft reboot, from repositioning the theme, from going back to season one status quo. It's all fine, so long as the story that follows from this point is interesting and it doesn't repeat the same beats. You know, if three years pass and we have to deal with Nindroids again, if we got to go through, you know, full episode arcs about the ninja finding their true potentials again and retreading the same old character development, like that's the point where it's going to kind of start to get bad. Soft reboots tend to mitigate this a lot of the time by introducing new characters while still having the old characters play roles in the story to enforce continuity. Ninjago is not doing that. It seems like it's picking up like right after the last season and all the characters are the same. So I'm going to be very curious to see how they do this without alienating older fans, especially because of the 11 minute episodes. For distribution's sake, it's cool, but for pacing and, you know, the actual content of the episodes, I'm a little worried because I see a lot of people saying, you know, oh, well, if it's 15, sorry, if it's 30 11-minute episodes, that's equivalent to a 15-episode regular season. If we were going by the usual 22 minutes, which is the longest Ninjago season ever, that's the most content we've ever had, stop complaining. And I'm like, well, you're right, but when you only have 11 minutes to fill up a self-contained story in that episode, either it's going to be very rushed, or it's going to be very episodic, which by which I mean the villains are doing something, it gets picked up on Nia's sensors in the bounty, it's, you know, they, the ninja have to go to dispatch to stop it, they're chasing some object, a relic or artifact, and the ninja get it, or the villains get it, and then the villains escape to fight another day, and the ninja learn a valuable moral about life. It's like it's, it's season one kind of stuff. And that was fine back then, and I'm actually fine with a little bit of that, just to kind of reintroduce you know, people to Ninjago and how it works. But the Ninjago caliber of storytelling has evolved so much over the last past few seasons. Uh, even though I wasn't too crazy on how March of the Oni ended the trilogy, we've gotten some very solid storytelling advancements. And I don't just mean everything's gotten darker. I mean, we've moved towards a lot more personal storytelling, a lot more emotional, a lot more, a lot less superficial, I guess, than what you would imagine a Lego theme to be. And a return to more episodic stories could signal like a regression for the sake of getting new fans. And I'm not so sure I want to ride that you know road again to run that race as again while the theme re-evolves for a new audience. So that's the tightrope that is going to be a, have to be walked with season 11, balancing their necessary soft reboot, which I firmly believe it, it is important to prevent this theme from going like Bionicle did. Which, by the way, when I say that, I don't mean Bionicle ever got terrible. It's just there was a point when all the story serials got introduced that it kind of became too much for people to follow. I think rolling the clock back is good so long as you come up with creative, new, well-paced stories to fit this new 
method to attract new people while also respecting the old fans and the old stories, not repeating old ground, and also taking advantage of your new distribution method without creating rushed, episodic, short, 11-minute stories. It's not an easy goal. I really do not envy the Ninjago showrunners in this. It's going to be very difficult to pull this off. But as always, you can bet that I will be following it with a rapt attention, you know, calling out any critiques I might have, giving praise where there's praise to be given, and we're going to be discussing every one of these 11-minute episodes on Ninjago Cast, and I, for one, am hyped. Just please, please, if anyone from LEGO watches this, if you're going to release this on the internet and not on TV, which is what kind of what that press release intimated, please, for the love of God, make sure to have a consistent publicized release schedule on your YouTube channel or your website. Don't let this go like the Bionicle G2 2015 animations where you would literally throw them up on random days, skipping weeks in between, sometimes releasing them in foreign languages before anything else so people got spoiled and couldn't understand. This is your chance to combat the issue of piracy, which has been plaguing Ninjago, and Cartoon Network's... Um, Cartoon Network's very poor to non-existent respect for the theme in its release. This is kind of your chance to give everyone an even playing field. So please don't, don't blow it. Just have a publicized release schedule. People know one episode a week or two episodes a week on this day. Boom, at this time. Check it out. It's going to be great. You can't throw it up at random times. It'll kill the hype. Either way. Expect more discussion on Ninjago Cast, but I'd love to know what you all think about this development and if you're hyped for Ninjago Season 11. Until then, I'll see y'all next time. And uh, yeah, have a great one, everybody. Bye.